Hey, you kids. Get off my lawn. All right, it's me again. It's me, the cranky old man, and welcome to another edition of Cranky's Corner. Today, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite Led Zeppelin albums. Kind of changes here and there. Sometimes it's Houses of the Holy, but most of the time, it's this. That's right. Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti. I got the 40th anniversary edition. Because, you know, all the cool kids have the 40th anniversary edition. Go out and get it. Um, This, we got to take our, our minds back to 1975. This was a double album. Um... And from what I understand, this shouldn't be as popular as it is. Everybody loves this album. Ask a lot of people, what's your favorite Zeppelin album? They'll say Physical Graffiti. Um, this was their sixth studio album. And from what I understand, recording it, this is, a, again, I think I said double album. Recording this was a mess. And it was a mess because John Paul Jones, the bass player, keyboard player, principal writer, all that other stuff, he wanted to quit the band. He was going to go work in, with a choir in, I think, Winchester, if I'm not mistaken. And the manager had to talk him into returning. John Paul Jones, I mean, not John Paul Jones, John Bonham, his... Drugs and alcohol use was completely off the chart at this time, you know, to the point where he barely even had any bladder control. And that's that's no lie. There was apparently a, a drum tech or a sound guy that was assigned to him that had to keep extra nappies. And I believe that's probably English for diapers, you know, for when he lost control of himself. And... Then there was Jimmy Page. He had said goodbye to cocaine and said hello to heroin. And he was really, really getting hot and heavy into that. Um, his, you know, cult worship and his mysticism and, you know, all the occult stuff that he was into to the point where it was getting to be eyebrow raising and concerning. And um, I don't even know what Robert Plant was into. So these guys must have been really into it hot and heavy if Robert Plant was the least of the problem. But they managed to put out eight epic songs. They managed to, to turn out eight epic songs and the other seven songs on the album were rejects from Zeppelin 3, Zeppelin 4, and Houses of the Holy. So these, the other seven songs were deemed either not good enough for the album or they just wouldn't fit the, um, the general scope of the album. But they made it over here. You know, I don't think the studio really wanted to make a double album, but I think Zeppelin just wanted to do it. Now this album, believe it or not, it sold... They, they, I heard it went platinum. And, and some of this stuff, fact check me on. It went platinum just on pre-orders alone. The album wasn't even available. And, and in 75, Led Zeppelin went out to promote an album, promote this album, Physical Graffiti. And it wasn't even, it wasn't even available yet. So they went out on tour to promote an album that wasn't even out yet, but the pre-orders for it were through the roof. That shows you how big this band was. They went on a global scale. Now, I'm going to take you inside to this. You've got on this album... Excuse me. You've got... Oh, I got to put my glasses on. Mostly because I'm old. Give me a minute. Need my cranky vision. 
All right. Cranky Vision. We got it. All right. Side one, you got Custard Pie. You got the Rover. You got In My Time of Dying, which is an epic song. Side two, Houses of the Holy, Trampled Underfoot, and Cashmere. All three of those right in a row you've heard on regular classic rock rotation on the radio. Side three, you've got In the Light, Bonjour, or Down by the Seaside, and Ten Years Gone. Ten Years Gone is a kick-ass tune. And the other ones are good. In the Light is really good, too. I like that one. Night Flight, The Wanton Song, Boogie with Stew, Black Country Woman, and Sick Again. These are all incredibly good songs, and they weren't considered good enough. Seven of these. I'm not sure which seven, but seven of these were not considered good enough for the other Zeppelin albums? Mmm. That's a kick-ass band that can write trash that's just as good as the good stuff that they're writing. But anyway, this is something else I wanted to show you. When you take this out, the, the record sleeves, it's got, they, they've got faces. And they designed the album cover so that you can put the faces in there. And it would show up if you wanted something different. If you wanted to be all eclectic and all that other nonsense. Now, the problem was, and again, fact check me on it because I heard this somewhere. And I'm not real good on doing homework. But from what I understand, when this album first came out, some of the faces that they used on these albums... You know, on this on this record sleeve, some of the faces they did not have permission to use. So they had to take it back and they had to rework the rework the album. So if you're ever out and you find an OG copy and it's got the original the original sleeves, the original artwork from like the first pressing, you might be sitting on some cash. But, you know, double check that. Um, and either way, why you'd want to sell it, I don't know, because it is an incredibly good album. But anyway, that's all I really wanted to touch on today. I'm going to keep these things short and sweet. Go out, run, do not walk to your local record store or your computer machine or your iPod device or any way you get your music. And go get Led Zeppelin Physical Graffiti. And you can discover for yourself why it is so many people's favorite Led Zeppelin album. Until next time. Get off my lawn. And have a good day. <laughs>